Hello guys, today we'll be making a video about useful races in Arcane Lineage and ranking them against each other. I don't believe in S, A, B, C, D, F rank tiers. I believe in actual accurate descriptions of the races. Although I do rank the more DPS niche ones above the supportive niche ones. That's just my preference. If you don't like that, then just change, run whatever you'd like. And also this is a very subjective video. So let's start with the easy one. Put Delahan in Universal. Delahan gives you extra stats every five levels. You get an extra point than usual. When you're level 40, that adds up to be a lot more points, which means you're better off base stats-wise than any other race, which is good for anything. You don't need to, no conditional bullshit, which is really good. Next, Dalahan gives you a skill called Lifeless Skull. It has the same power as some of the super class moves, which makes it a really good move. And yeah, Dalahan just has good moves, good stats, and it, as a bonus, it has an extra life if you don't play Legendary. And if you do play Legendary, you get extra chance to get energy, which is good support and utility. Next, we'll be moving on to Veneri. You get some damage based on you get some damage based on your gold, I think, but it doesn't amount to much. What really matters is the wealth scramble. It, you have a high chance of rolling rolling a stat boost based on your highest stat. So if you have mostly arc, you'll roll mostly arc or like range damage, which will boost the stat a lot. You can use this with basically anything. But it's not universal because it is RNG and you do need gold. But it that's why I'm saying it's niche because you need gold and you need luck. Next, let's move on to Dryuga. A lot of people disagree with me because they think that Dryuga can like kill the minions and get a bunch of damage boost and just life steal a lot. But I'm thinking in like the lens of five player squads. So Dryuga is not really good in 5 player squads because of you can bring healers or whatnot. But if you're solo, I could see it being in the high DPS but stability synergies. But as of now, like the healers, they kind of ruin the point. I'm not going to lie. And minions, the damage buff is very temporary. I don't see how you're going to be able to use that to its fullest potential. Okay, next let's move on to Estella. Yeah, Estella. Um, basically, a lot of people thought this race was mid before the MV update, but ever since Berserker got buffed, people started to realize how good the its um, low HP buff is. Basically, Estella, whenever you drop below half HP, you get damage resistance, extra healing, and more damage, I think. That's all the, that's all the stuff you get when you're max level and get all the passives up. And that extra damage is really good. It's really noticeable, especially for Berserker. And yeah, not really much to say, much to say about this. So if you want to run this, you want to find a way to be below half HP or like to meet the threshold and be like preferably Berserker or Impaler or like classes that like like to be low HP in order to gain even more benefits to synergize. But I would put it behind Veneri because Veneri doesn't need low HP and is not as conditional. I'm ranking it based on conditionality and viability. So that's why it's ranked lower. Nisei? Okay, so I'm aware that Nisei has a 20% burn damage pro damage thing so it will do more burn damage which is why it's good for monk and elementalist but i honestly see it more towards support variant because of its uh circuit charge skill because it will it will get more um energy which means you can use those expensive supporting skills like metrom's grasp a uh, breath of fungier or like any other expensive supporting move, usually the expensive moves are support moves debuff moves which is why i think nisei is best paired with that but you could make a case for specific synergies. I just don't think it's it's more it's meant to be a DPS type race. But you can make the case for the high DPS. Next, Saltis. You basically need this for speed builds. And um, speed builds are not in the best position, but they can do a lot of damage. I'm putting it behind Estella because I, I think it, I think it's behind Estella in terms of nuking potential. But basically, Stoltis converts your speed into crit chance, which means speed builds can crit more often with Stoltis. With the artifact Expedite Amulet, you can double your speed temporarily, and, and after Stoltis converts that speed, you'll have 100% crit chance or above temporarily, which is really good for speed builds. And speed builds do hit hard, it's just hard to use, which is why it's behind um, Estella. Next, Corvolos. I'm aware of its secret passive to give people to, to increase your magic damage output, but because it's two skills it gets while it levels up are specifically buffing skills, I would put it more as a support type 
race where you use to support your other mages or whatnot. But yes, you can use it to, use it to support yourself. But at the end of the day, you are you are supporting yourself, so it is more support. I do not see this as like a mainly DPS thing. Yes, you can run DPS, but you'll have you'll the race will give you give it so that you'll have some support moves in your kit, which is why I think it leans towards support. Um, next, let's talk about vast vast vast. Ah, I can't pronounce this, but you can run this with Necromancer or Dark Wraith. Basically, it's the summoner race. You'll get you can you can summon a sylph that can help that can help out in battle. I honestly just see this as another meat shield you can use to like guard against MV and not take damage. Um, I honestly, I just see it as another summon that you can cycle in because summoners do not do the most damage right now, which is why I can't put it in either of here. And it's pretty niche because you're basically forced to run either of those. Or you could run Hexer to get the mastery where if your summon dies you inflict hex on them. But that's also again niche and support. So. Um, next, let's let's put let's put um uh what's what's that name? Ah, I forgot. But oh, Amoris. Basically, Amoris um it has pretty mid passives. You get immunity to hexed, and that doesn't really matter. It, it really should have gotten immunity like resistance to curse, maybe like wear it off two times faster or something. It skills it can reverse your you can take the enemy's buffs and give them your debuffs. So basically, if MV uses Eclipse and you use the, the the swapping move to swap their stats with yours, you can gain MV's insane damage boost. You can do the same with Sand Golem to gain their insane damage boost and then proceed to nuke them for a lot of damage. But outside of mobs that can buff themselves, this is not use. This is not like that useful. It's it's hex move costs four energy, which is extremely expensive. And if you're a DPS, you're probably not really going to be using that that often because it's really expensive. So I'm going to put it in very situational. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's very situational. And most players, it's probably not a good fit unless you're like, you know the game, you know all the mechanics. Okay, next, let's move on to Lectum. It's, I think it's more of a support class. It's secret passive, it's just more regen. You get a move called Mucilage that can like reduce damage if you apply on someone. And it has a... Poison Snap move, which applies poison. It's a really good source of applying DOT. I'm aware you can run this with um, Brawler, but mostly people just run this with Paladin because it's a really good synergy. But if if you if you specifically want to say Brawler, you can put it here. I just think that Brawler could use literally any of the other things. It can just apply debuffs using um, Alchemist Potion or whatnot. Because at the end, Brawler, like the Brawler, is only the top tier DPS when it's solo. When you're in a party, you're not getting all the aggro, so you're not you're not actually deflecting all those buffs yet. If you know what I mean. So I'm taking this as a lens of five player parties for rating. Um and then uh Damino's is this should be really obvious. It's a support class. Basically um it has more outgoing healing I think and it gets a skill called Mulligan Realm. It's a three energy skill. That's actually pretty expensive. So it's more of a support thing. You probably wouldn't be able to afford this as a DPS if you're probably busy doing DPS type stuff. So um, Damino's is mostly towards, it's mostly like a saint thing. You would run this if you're a saint. Um, Mulligan Realm has a chance to give your teammates Mulligan, which is like death resist, death um, resistance. So like if they're going to die, but Mulligan activated, they don't die. And I'm, I'm this is support because you're not really doing any more damage. You're just giving your teammates death resist and you're increasing your outgoing healing. And yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed. I don't think any class is miserable per se, but I do think some of them should get buffed to like a Morris. And if you skip to the video, just know that it's not... It, just because I ranked Dryuga very low does not mean it can't be good. I'm just saying it's more niche and hard to use. It's less universal is what I meant.